Donna Schwartz here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to improve your music performance skills. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about were long tones. And someone had written that, you know, they enjoy playing long tones, they look at it as meditation. And I thought to myself, you know, I could kind of get that because when you're playing long tones, it's, it can be kind of very soothing, very relaxing, but there's a problem with treating it as being like meditation because what will you wind up doing? You may wind up zoning out. You may wind up not paying attention to what you need to do at that moment and you may wind up, your brain may be somewhere else and that's not what you want. You see, when you're playing long tones and long tones are very important and there's many ways to approach playing long tones and I get into that in detail in my course, Get a Killer Saxophone Tone, and I talk about it also in my free course that's out right now, Supercharger Saxophone Tone. Again, I'll put the link in the uh, description below. There's many ways, ways to approach long tones, but you have to be mindful when you're doing that. If you're approaching meditation as making you more mindful when you're playing long tones, then that's a good thing. But my first thought when I... Um, when I read that comment from somebody, I was thinking, uh oh, this person is just playing long tunes, long tones and going through the motions. And it really seriously is a danger to that. Because if you're not paying attention to how you first articulate to get the, the tone to produce, if you're not paying attention to your intonation, if you're not paying attention to your breath support, your um your oral cavity, but also that's just the internal stuff. If you're not paying attention to how you want that note to sound, if you're not hearing an octave lower, an octave higher, the fifths, if you're not hearing a full orchestra or a full rhythm section behind you, you're not being mindful. All right. Now, some of you are thinking, are you kidding? I'm, I'm supposed to hear all that stuff when I'm doing long tones. You don't have to hear all that stuff. But if you really want to get, want to get the most bang for your buck with a long tones exercise, you need to be mindful and also be very creative. And um, in being creative, you're going to get the best sound possible and you're also gonna trigger the muscle memory that you need so that when you play those tones, those pitches, in your pieces, your songs, whatever you're playing, your improvisations, the muscle memory will come back. Also, when we play instruments too, it's better to be creative all the time anyway. So the more that you can start to spur the creativity even as you're doing long tones, which people may perceive to be the most boring thing in the world, you're spurring the creativity. It's making your music practice much better. Okay. And it helps out everything else. Okay. Just checking on. All right. So if you agree with me, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, I'd appreciate that. Um, so again, with long tones, yes, you should practice them, but be mindful. Don't zone out. All right. I really wanted to address that. Thank you for the likes. I appreciate that. Okay. On to the next topic. Um, how to approach breathing. I've got some loves there too. That's awesome. Next topic, how to approach breathing. Uh, how do I want to put this? Someone had said something to the effect of, you know, how do I, how do I think about breathing? What do, what do I do? If you, if you obsess too much on the how to breathe, you're going to create tension in your body and you could, you may think you are the best breathing technique in the world. When you create tension, you're not breathing well, you're not breathing efficiently. So let me put it to you this way. Um, and this, this goes for beginners, but this also goes for professionals as well, because sometimes, you know, we get caught up with all the stuff that we're doing, all the stuff that we're playing, and we lose a little bit of the fundamentals. And sometimes when we do that, we create extra tension in our body, bad habits ensue, and then we're like, uh-oh, I've got to make some fixes, make some changes here. Uh, I'm going to use an analogy, and you may have heard me say this before on previous Facebook Lives or if you're a subscriber to my newsletter and the videos that I send out. Approach breathing the way you approach breathing when you talk. Do you think about breathing when you talk? Probably not. If you do, it would probably drive you nuts. <laughs> think about it, okay? Um, now, does that mean that you shouldn't pay attention to breathing when you're playing? No, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, if you start to pay attention to, if you watch yourself when you're breathing, when you're talking, you're going to notice one thing. 
your body naturally takes in enough air to speak what you need to speak, to say what you need to say. If you're the type of person that babbles, which means that you keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and, and you don't get, let anybody else get a word in, you're going to see those babblers take those really quick breaths to keep going. Um, but if you watch people when they breathe, they take in just enough air to, to, um, to say the phrase that they need to. It's the same thing in music. Okay, so the first thing when you're thinking about breathing is you're going to be taking in enough air to complete the phrase. But where does that come from? Up here. Interesting, interestingly enough, um, when I was back in New York, I had one of my students, she was a really great uh, trumpet player, young girl, and she had a private teacher. Uh, I was her band director. And she said, oh yeah, my, my teacher said that I should force my stomach out every time uh, when I'm breathing. So this way, you know, I'll have enough air in. And I thought to myself, hmm, not, not great because you're, you're starting with tension again. So the thing that I want you to think about when you're dealing with breathing, you want to hear the music that you're playing. So let's say it's long tones. So if you're going to play, um, I don't know, a concert, a long tone, right? Hear the pitch first, really hear it in your head. Here's the creativity again, right folks? Hear that pitch, octave higher, octave low, whatever. Hear the pitch and then take the breath for that pitch and then go. You don't want to get so caught up with, okay, how do I breathe? Do I push my stomach out first? Do I keep my tongue against the tip of the reed? Do I not or lift up my shoulders, not lift up my shoulders? Do I do X, Y, Z? If you start thinking about all that stuff, that house stuff, you're going to make yourself go crazy and confused. Just make things natural, all right? I like to use natural analogies. So when you're when you're going for a note, um, I just have my mouthpiece out, sorry. Um, and I don't have the silencer readily available. Actually, give me a second, let me get the silencer. That should be close to a concert A. So when I'm breathing, I'm taking the breath for that pitch, okay? I'm not thinking about, okay, I've got to make sure that I lower my tongue, that I throw my stomach out, that I do, I, I don't want to think that because it's, that's not musical thinking. I want to think musically. So I want to think about the pitch that I want to play. One, two, three. Okay, so I hope that that answers that question from that um, from the person that uh, made that comment to me this week. You know, how do I approach breathing? Because if you make it too complicated, you're going to create tension, and it's it's going to make it harder for you to breathe to last longer. It's not going to feel good either. Session. If you have any um, questions that you want to answer, you know, whether it's live or if you want to ask them to me during the week. If you're on Facebook, go to my Facebook page at Donna Schwartz Music and just ask them there, okay? If you're a subscriber to my weekly newsletter, uh, which by the way, if you're not a subscriber, why not? Go to DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, subscribe. Right now you get a free video, three tips to fatten up your saxophone tone. Um, if you're a subscriber to my newsletter, every week I ask for questions, just respond to those emails, okay? Those, uh, those newsletters come out on Tuesdays. And uh, if not, show up live and ask the questions here. On that note, take care. Have a good one.